Right, morning guys. So this morning I am focused on authenticating with GitHub OAuth. The reason I want to do that is someone can sign straight up to the app. They can give me access or give RepoBear access to their repositories so that they can import them into RepoBear. What that'll mean is that you as the user can come in, you can import a repository, which is essentially where we're just gonna generate the deploy SSH key, and then we can add that into your GitHub. I also need to announce the winner of the giveaway. So I'll do that later in the video. We're gonna get straight into it. Also, if you're a developer, subscribe. All right, have an update. Check this out. Look at this bad boy I just returned. We've got the app and you want to authenticate with GitHub, sign in, gave me this code back instantly. My back end was just sent to that code and it returned, boom, access token. We can now authenticate with GitHub, let's go. Cool. So if you're interested to know how that GitHub authentication is actually working so that I can receive the access token, let me break it down for you using my Grove made notepad and pen. Okay, you might need to come over here. This is how it works. So essentially, we've got our Nest.js front end, Nest, sorry, Next, we're already getting confused. Next.js front end, and we're clicking this sign in with GitHub button. What that does is it sends a request to GitHub for a code, which they return. All I'm passing along with that code is literally just my application's client ID, and then GitHub goes, oh yes, you do have an application with this client ID. Here's a code, and let's see if you actually are doing what you're saying you're trying to do. So then with that code, we then send it to my nest.js backend server. And with that, we're hitting a controller that is then going to try and get the access token from GitHub. So what we're doing now is we're gonna go back to GitHub, my application's client ID with my application's client secret, and then also with that code that we just got from up here. Then what GitHub's gonna do is they're gonna go, hmm, is this actually all legit? Like, is this from the right application with the right secret and the right code? If yes, we're going to return an access token, which is what you see right here. And then with that access token, we're gonna go, great, you can have that access token. So we'll pass it back to the client. It's just one big loop. So we're just getting a code, we're sending that code up to the back end. My backend's got the credentials to query that code and check if it's real. If it's real, GitHub's gonna send us an access token that we can pass back to the client. That's literally authentication in a nutshell with GitHub. Now with that access token, what's cool is we can create some SSH deploy keys that we can add into a user's repositories, uh, which they choose, obviously. I'm not just gonna start adding SSH deploy keys to all their repositories. And that'll give them the impression that they're able to import repositories into their RepoBear dashboard. From there, then obviously they can create their share links and they can paywall it and do all that kind of stuff. But these are kind of the main building blocks that you need to get sorted in order to be able to move forward. So yeah, GitHub authentication. Also, if you love this notepad as much as I do, there's a link down below, Grove made. Honestly, the sickest their success series you can ever get. I love this, so good. All right, let's keep moving. Project's going well. The build has been really fun and exciting so far. I've got the front end Next.js project up and running. I've got Shad CN installed for actually theming and bringing in components and like dark mode, light mode, like making it all just beautiful. Uh, I've got the back end authentication sus, so my login, my registering user, retrieving access tokens, just validating those JWTs. Uh, what was I doing? I was gonna, was I gonna make some coffee? I can't remember what I was even doing. Overall, what's going on is the app is coming along well. It's actually starting to shape up into a product. Today, what I wanna do, because I've actually already got the logic for connecting to GitHub and getting the access token as well, I'm actually gonna start pulling in repositories. I'm gonna see the RepoBear core product actually working. But first, of course, I'm making some coffee. Damn, we gotta clean this joint up. Let's get some dishes going. Now, I was stuck on this bug 
for like an hour. My Postgres database just wasn't seeding with my Prisma tables and models and such. And it was super frustrating. Like I was literally stuck, like looking at this thing going, why the heck are my models not in my Postgres database? I was checking the connection, the connection was sweet. Checking all my config properties for actually connecting to the local host. I was changing numbers, I was changing all sorts of things and like literally nothing was working. So I went back to the finds database, which is the iOS app I was working on. I was literally just comparing everything. Oh my gosh. I was literally just comparing everything like one for one with the finds backend. And it took me over an hour to realize that the name on the database that I was using for the connection was actually different than what it needed to be. It was the tiniest detail. Instead of being Postgres at the end of the like connection string, it was my DB. It still allowed you to connect to the database, but just didn't allow you to pull in the Prisma models. So yeah, anyway, that was dumb. Figured it out. A nice little bug hunt for this morning. We actually get to move on to some exciting visual and real logic for actually pulling in repositories and viewing them and doing all that kind of thing. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. Also, I have seen that there's been a lot of comments asking if I'm still at the startup that I moved to New York originally for. Technically, yes, I am still working there. There's just some changes going on behind the scenes, which I can't really talk about right now. That's okay, because our focus is on building Repo Bear and building fun projects and enjoying that. So that's where my focus is. That's what I'm gonna be putting my time towards. And yeah, for now, we're just gonna keep moving forward. Let's make some coffee. You are joking. The, oh, the only coffee we have is this stuff again. Nah, all right, we're gonna go get some coffee. Alrighty. Now we gotta head downstairs to get the good stuff. Matty wants stump down coffee, so. Here we go, this is what we want. Jeez. Oh my goodness, gotta take a mortgage out to get this kind of coffee. All right, hmm. Like, this is sick, this is very cool. $23? Am I really gonna pay $23? Or I could just go for the safe. Yeah, I mean, I think this stuff's been great. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, hmm, which one should we do this time? Chocolatey, dark and velvety, smooth and aromatic. I think we're gonna go for that one. Sorry, Maddie, we're doing La Vaza. Thanks, man. Got the goods. Hey! Do you want some coffee? You want some coffee? Oh, big stretch. Come on. So this is where we're up to. I've now got light mode, as you can see with this reflection on my face. Absolutely blinding. But you know what's really cool? You come in here, this little icon, switch that bad boy, boom! We've got 2024's number one feature for all dev projects online, dark mode. Okay, cool. We're already a professional application, which is great. Okay, so I've got this document full of topic based on, like almost ranked on the comments that I receive on this channel and also in Instagram and like LinkedIn DMs. And a lot of it comes back to, I think, learning how to learn, which is, and I don't wanna go too deep into this and I don't wanna bore you, but I think it's like one of the most critical skills when it comes to software and development and to be honest, like building anything in life is if you can learn how to learn effectively, you're actually unstoppable. Hear me out. If you are asking, what are the resources that I should use in order to learn this thing? What do you think you would do if you didn't have me or anyone else to help you? That is how you figure out how to learn to learn. And so it all starts, especially in software engineering, with jumping on Google, jumping on Stack Overflow, jumping on ChatGPT, and figuring stuff out for yourself. And this is kind of what I went into a little bit inside the how I would learn to code if I had to start all over again video that I posted a few videos back. The most powerful skill for you is gonna be that critical thinking and actually just being like, okay, I don't know how to do something. I'm gonna try and figure it out. And so essentially all you need to do is just start moving forward, taking baby steps, which leads me on to my second dev chat topic that I've got written down here, which is another one of the most important ones. And it is how do you keep motivated and not overwhelmed 
when building projects. Let's just take Repo Bear for example, the project that I'm currently building right now. When you look at it from an outside perspective, it seems incredibly overwhelming and potentially stressful depending on your skills and knowledge in the development industry. And so I could be overwhelmed and stressed about the build, especially being on a timeline where I'm trying to build it in my spare time while also doing YouTube stuff and work stuff and you know, gotta pay bills and make other things work. But it is all about just taking baby steps, learning how to learn and going, okay, cool. If I just go first step is I need to understand how to create the login endpoints, which then I can link to my login UI. Cool, now that I'm authenticated, now what I need to do is authorize with GitHub. So let's create an endpoint for that, which then returns to my UI. Now I wanna import some repositories. So I'm gonna create an endpoint with the GitHub API using that access token from the previous one, get those repositories, return it to my UI. And you can see how you can build this big structure of like, okay, how can I slowly move forward step by step by step by step? And in development especially, do not try and just like imagine the entire build all at once or you will, I guarantee, get overwhelmed. It's all about just like moving slowly, learning to learn, Googling, helping yourself and just like slowly making progress. That's literally all it is. And if you practice it enough and you build enough projects, you're gonna get better and better and better at it to where your risk, well not risk appetite, but your overwhelm appetite actually gets a lot better. When I started one of my like junior software engineering roles, the smallest things, like smallest in terms of today's knowledge that I have, would stress me out. For example, creating a new TypeScript React component. That stressed me out, because I was like not very experienced with it. I'd barely used TypeScript. I only really knew JavaScript components and barely you know, React components in JavaScript. But those are the situations where you learn because you're under pressure and you have to figure it out. Overall thing, from these two points, the overwhelm and keeping motivated, plus the learning to learn. The more situations that you can put yourself in where you are under pressure to try and figure something out for yourself, you're gonna learn. You're gonna make progress in your software engineering development career and in your personal projects and in everything you do when it comes to coding. So I would recommend if you want to make progress, if you want to move forward, put yourself in more situations where you don't know how to do something and you'll figure it out. To be honest, when I really think about it, that's like almost one of the number one rules of program. Put yourself in situations where you don't know how to do something, be the dumbest guy in the room, feel like the dumbest guy in the room, and you will start learning. And especially the team that you work in when you do eventually get like a programming job, if you've got a whole lot of people in your team that are way smarter than you, it's a really, really good thing. You don't wanna be the smartest guy in the room, you ideally wanna be the dumbest guy in the room so that you can soak in all of their skills and knowledge that they have acquired over the years. Anyway, I could talk forever on this, those are two things, take it or leave it. Just get good at learning to learn, take baby steps, just moving forward. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. All right, last thing that I do need to do, I need to announce the winner of the Keychron Keyboard Giveaway competition. So without further ado, the winner of that competition is, all right, here we go, let's pick a winner. And the winner is iSereno, longtime sub and iOS dev here. Favorite Keychron keyboard is definitely the Q1 Pro. What a beast. Absolutely, what a beast. iSereno, we're gonna send you out a keyboard. In fact, Keychron's gonna send you a keyboard. I will comment on your original comment on the video and we'll get your shipping details, we'll get that all sussed for you. But congratulations, thanks to everyone who entered the competition. As always, guys, if you're a developer, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Only 50% of you are actually subscribed, so come on, help me out here. It's completely free, subscribe. Otherwise, have a great day. See you guys soon.